Hey guys, Coach Arjun here for Dr. Muscle and in this video I would like to summarize a little bit the article that I wrote but also expand on topics such as RAR and gauging the amount of effort that we should be exerting on a given set because they may be um, topics that you may or may not be unfamiliar with. Anyway, when it comes to creating a great training plan that has the goal of hypertrophy, we really cannot just stop at suggesting the amount of repetitions or sets that we should be performing for a given exercise. And that's because if we do, we're then missing a key ingredient, which is suggesting also the level of intensity of effort that we should be exerting on a given set. How hard should we actually train for a given set? If we take a look at the literature, that looks into the relationship between volume and hypertrophy, we can see that the correlation is a positive one. Generally, when we increase volume, we see a greater response in muscle growth. However, that's not always the case because we can see very similar growth regardless of the weight that we uh, load the bar with, meaning that even if the bar has a heavy load compared to a lighter load, if the amount of effort that is exerted across the board between uh, all loads is similar, then we will have similar uh, results in terms of muscle growth. This is to show that there is a positive correlation between volume and hypertrophy, but only when volume is intended as sets taken to failure, meaning that it really comes down to the amount of effort that we exert and how close to task failure we really are. Task failure is pretty much the point at which we can no longer perform any more repetitions. And that is very important to use as a metric because if we know what is failure, then stopping just shy from it maximizing, uh, maximizes the amount of growth that we can produce for a given set. So, well, a method that we like to use as coaches is RAR, or reps in reserve. This method basically tells you how many repetitions left you have in the tank. And uh, to give you an example, let's say we load the bar with a weight that we can only perform 10 reps with, a maximum of 10 reps. And we actually do 10 reps. So we reach zero RAR, which is zero reps in reserve. We reach task failure. Now let's say we use the same load, but this time we stop at 8 repetitions. In this case, we have at least 2 more repetitions left in the tank, so that means that set is at 2 RIR. This is very important because if through using um, RIR we can gauge the amount of intensity of effort that we exert on a given set, then we can train um, close or to task failure and maximizing the amount of growth that we can get for a given set. Now you may ask, how can we tell whether or not what we perceive to be task failure is actually task failure? Well, I like to say that gauging RIR is a skill and it gets perfected with time. If you're a beginner, then you will definitely need more time to train and experience what it feels to train to true failure. But another method that can be used is gauging repetition speed. Repetition speed is another important metric to use when lifting in order to tell whether or not you're close to failure, because there's a positive correlation between velocity loss in a, in a set and proximity to failure, meaning that when we perform a set and repetitions start to slow down, then that means that we are actually uh, training close to failure. So if we use as an example the weight that we used before for the example of RIR, so using a weight that we can lift a maximum of 10 reps with, and we perform a set, then we can notice that the repetition speed um, for the beginning of this set will be quite fast. As we approach the reps that are closer to failure, 
then the reps will start moving very slow. As we approach maximal level of, exer of effort exertion, and that is because when our muscle fibers need to exert high amounts of force, then they have to contract at a slow speed. So if we're performing a set and the amount of effort that we exert is maximal because we're reaching task failure, then the repetitions will have to move slow because that's when they exert the most amount of force in order to move the load. So pretty much um, that is why it's important to train close to failure and occasionally reach task failure. As you can see in the article, I suggest you uh, to train within a one to three RIR and occasionally um, hitting true test failure. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it made sense and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.